What's up, Ryan? So good to have you on the show. Yeah, it's good to finally be on here. You know, we've talked about it for a little bit and uh, how fun it would be to kind of tell our story, how we met and, you know, just the the dynamic of working together and all the cool stuff you've done, um, you know, past the time that, you know, when you and I worked with the same company. So, yeah, I, I'm just so excited to share your story and all the cool things that you're doing in the world and, and all the ways that you're impacting the lifestyle investor community. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun ride. Well, we met back in 19... 98 or 99 no it was 2000 did we meet in 2000 yeah i think we met right before management there okay so we've been friends for i mean a long time you know 23 plus years so it's so it's it's really fun for me when i think about um who are my closest friends who are the people that i want to do life with and how can I get them involved in the lifestyle investor, uh, especially when they don't need to be, especially when they've got a thriving business like you do and you don't need the money, um, but you love what we're building. So, you know, it's an honor to have you on the team and, and you know, acting as our COO and, and many days of the week as the CEO, probably most days of the week. Uh, and so, you know, it's just fun um, being able to work together. Yeah, well, it's been fun being a part of it before it was ever the Lifestyle Investor, you know, that small little uh, happy hour group that I was, I, I feel very fortunate I was able to be a part of with those guys. Well, it's funny because this was a total passion project and I didn't have any idea where it was going to go. But I remember, <laughs> you know, Brad uh, Johnson, our, our good buddy, it was like, hey, man, I think you've got something here. This thing's awesome. And I just can't wait. Like every week, I can't wait until we get together. Um, it's so like, I look forward to this. I, and, and so he's like, I think you should, you know, make it bigger. And I was like, you think, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't know where it could go. I just knew I had fun. He had fun. You had fun. And, uh, yeah. look where we are today. Uh, who would have ever thought that we would be branded as, uh, one of the biggest and one of the best masterminds out there of all masterminds. Yeah. Very well, cool. It goes to show you too, of just, you know, kind of your attitude and you know, the group we, we run with is churning something that's not so positive because that all happened during COVID and finding the silver lining and, hey, what can we do because of this? Um, you know, we, we created something great out of it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Well, you and I had a chance to work in Cutco together. You know, we paid for college by selling Cutco. We moved into management. We ran offices. We ran divisions. I uh, had a lot of people uh, doing things. Uh, at one point in time, the the corporate company training uh, was was modeled on me and and my videos, and they came and brought a film crew to record everything that we did from start to finish. Uh, and then it was fun being able to hand that baton over to you yeah. as you were the next wave of kind of systematic um, implementation and, and, you know, really trying to create the SOPs for new managers and uh, even veteran managers. So that was really neat. And then we both kind of went our own ways after that. And I think it'd be fun to, to talk a little bit about your journey. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, you were kind of the pioneer where I remember, I remember we're at a meeting and I think you told me, you're like, hey, you know, I might not be here next year. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> you you were at the top of your game and, you know, I knew you'd been investing in mobile home parks a little bit. And, you know, I'd gone to you for some other stuff. I mean, the whole life insurance and some other strategies we've talked about. But I was so shocked that you were, were walking away from a great income but then, I mean, it totally made sense. And, you know, that was one of the things where I really got serious about my investing. I was always a good saver, mediocre investor. You know, I did, I just throw it in mutual funds and some, pick some stocks and yada, yada, that, the, the, the normal stuff. So I, I got serious about, you know what, I really want to find an investment where my skill set can impact the return. And so I kind of had that thought going. And then um, one day I was playing basketball with my brother. And he fouled me really hard because he can't keep up with his older brother. He has to foul, right? <laughs> and so I hurt my shoulder and I hurt it to the point where I, I couldn't do a push up. I couldn't do anything. And I, I've never liked working out, never liked going to the gym. I'd play sports to stay in shape and I couldn't do it. So, summertime, put on some weight. And finally, I get the little flyer thing that's Orange Theory, three free workouts, whatever, you know. And I'm like, I call him up. I'm like, hey, I can't even do a push up. Can you work with me? They're like, yeah, sure, no problem. And I went in. And it was fun. It was great. I'd never 
had something, you know, like a workout was planned for you and coach was there to kind of modify. And our coach was great because she'd say, no, don't do that. I know you have a hurt shoulder. And um, so that was really cool. And, and uh, yeah, I ended up dropping a bunch of weight and uh, loved the workout. But then the key was I saw them open their second one while there was only one in the state at that time. And I saw them open up their second one and the whole process of it. And that's what we did with Cutco. It's like open up an office, train the manager and manage it through somebody else. I was like, oh, this will be like having another office in the division. And so um, we got in, saw how much it was. I'm like, you know, I probably want to bring on partners. So I, I found the best business partners I know, which are my parents. And uh, my mom and dad were retired and we have uh, very uh, complementary skill sets. My mom loves the admin and stuff that would just give me a headache. And uh, my dad for facility maintenance and the build outs, he was just instrumental in that. And uh, we went on and it took, that was probably the best sale I've made. It was uh, convincing them that it was a good idea though. Cause my dad is very risk adverse and opening a business and fitness and all that stuff. He's like, I don't know. Well, it's nice. You get a little one plus one plus one equals five, right? Or equals 10 where you just have the, you know, some economies of scale, some some different geniuses and superpowers that combine in a way that is totally aligned. And I love that. I mean, I love when I can have those partnerships that go to the moon because uh, you work well together, you have different skill sets, you totally can run different aspects of the business um, at a much higher pace than if you were doing all of it, but you're also, you know, more skif gifted and skilled in certain areas. So I love that you're able to do that. And with your parents, I, I admire that relationship and, and that cool opportunity. Most people never get a chance to do that. No, and it's been so cool. There's so many things after it, you know, where I have three little, little ones. And so they still come up every other week. We visit each studio. They stay the night. A lot of times I can get date night there. Uh, on that night they stay and then you know every third time we'll send one of the munchkins home with them and they get some good grandma papa time but they've had a lot more grandkid time because of the business which has been something where you know um you know into integrating your lifestyle with your business it, it's been really good it's been a good perk I love it. Well, we talk about, you know, lifestyle investor all the time. And, and what does that lifestyle look like? What is ideal? It's different for everyone. And I love the moves that you've made that are important to you and to your family. So I, I just think that's awesome. And I think it's worth noting uh, that you have two of the top performing, two of the top 25 most profitable studios out of all of Orange Theory Fitness. And we're talking over 1300 locations just in the U.S. alone. So, I mean, yeah. like what a lot of people don't get is that um, you didn't ever have to step into the role as COO with Lifestyle Investor. You are making great money. You, you still are making great money, not counting anything from, uh, you know, what, what our brand pays you. Um, but it's cool that you got to opt into it. And, and you tried some other things too in the interim, right? When you said, okay, well, I've kind of got this Orange Theory Fitness thing on lock. I don't have to work, but it'd be cool to, you know, to figure out what is next. Uh, and I, I'm curious what that process was like for you. And, you know, I don't know if we want to get into the story, but I feel like I had to, uh, you know, really put some pressure on you to get you in to run it because I knew you'd be amazing, but you were kind of in a, a time and space in life where you're like, hey, I don't, I don't really need to do anything. I kind of just want to chill. Well, there, there was a lot of in and outs of, of how I was doing because, you know, 2000, my dad, I mentioned, was very conservative. So we took very little debt for our Orange Theories and we paid them off fully before we ever took any distribution. So that was at the end of 2018. So I said, you know what? I want to see how this goes with one full year of working my full time at Cutco and having both both of them going. So let's go and let, let's see how it goes. And two night, 2019 was, was awesome. I was able to do cut go running it through somebody else for the most part. Orange theories were great. It was a lot of fun. And so the fall of 2019, I'm like, I'm going to leave at the end of the year. This is going to be it. Uh, Casey and I have a partnership. We said, this is going to be the 2020 is going to be the year of fun. We had five or six trips planned out. Our second youngest at the time, he was three or four months old. So uh, we'd be able to travel for free with him and he's easy to take on the plane at the time. And then, uh, so in January of 2020, I left my full-time job of 22 years um, because the fitness studios were going well. And I live in Washington state. And so we know what happened 
two months later, and that's when <laughs> COVID came. So um, it's like horrible wow, timing. <laughs> horrible <laughs> timing. It, it literally couldn't have been worse timing, Ryan. And and financially <laughs> for 2020, that's correct. It couldn't have been any worse financially for that single year. But I knew that you know I just kept telling myself that. I need to be able to put, I have time freedom now. I don't have my job this year. The Orange Series aren't doing anything. They're closed for a year. So I need to make sure I'm using my time the right way. So initially I was thinking years from now, I'll be able to look back and say, because of 2020, I'm because of COVID, I'm here. And if it wasn't for, if COVID didn't happen, I wouldn't have been at a good of a place. And then some stuff was just lucky. Like I didn't plan that you were going to start doing the investor happy hour uh, little calls that you did. I stumbled upon meeting Eric Van Horn and that's where I started doing the franchise stuff. And then meeting Ryan Levesque in that little, um, happy hour group, saw his online coaching and said, you know, that's something I've always wanted to learn more about and gotten involved in his programs. But it, it wasn't always fun because, you know, first we're like, oh, this is great. You know, a little vacation. And then COVID kept staying. And we're like, wait a second, first round of PPP. So we, we used our first round of PPP to pay our coaches um, more significantly more than what that. Remember, they had the federal retention uh, one, so they got an extra six hundred a week. So we had to pay them more to where it was worth not sitting on their couch, and we weren't allowed to take any revenue. So we paid out all our people because we were thinking most important thing for us is to retain our members. To retain our members, we need to you know give them some value. So let's pay our coaches to do online workouts and. We used almost our entire first round of PPP on this and we went through about June. And then we're like, oh my gosh, we don't have any more money left and we still can't collect revenue and we have no sign of reopening. Um, and by the way, I should chime in here because to, to give perspective on how bad it was in the state of Washington and other states, but yours was one of the worst. Um, I own an Orange Theory uh, fitness studio with some partners and we literally closed down for two months. That's it. So our total time closed. I don't even know if we hit two months. It was right around two months. But yeah. you guys were closed for the craziest long amount of time. And I felt so bad for you guys. Yeah, one studio was closed for 358 days. Wow. Um, the other studio, we worked some creative spacing in one. And um, we were able to open for a couple months in September. And then they closed down everything in November. So um both studios were closed for about a year. And then we were at 1,200 and about 1,170 members going into COVID. When we reopened that March, uh, I think the final, the opening number was like 300 members. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this is, a, this is a great reminder to do business in the states where they like you, where they have business friendly laws. When, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to learn from this. And some of this is like, there's nothing you could do about it. But for those that are thinking about, hey, uh, I want to start a business. I will tell you that the state you're in matters, the city yeah. that you're in, the location that you're in. So, so pick your location wisely because it matters probably more than most people realize. Yeah, it, it was frustrating in July when 900 Orange Theories were open and we were the the West Coast wasn't, you know, and you saw all of them. But, um, but we made some big moves, and the way we handled it, I think, is what put us back in a position of strength again because. Not all, not everybody who had those member accounts has gone back up to those upper levels. Fitness in general, it, it's been a, a more challenging than it was pre-COVID. Um, but uh, bec I think because of how our staffs, and I really have to give a lot of credit to our staff, they they were amazing in both studios. Um, because of how they handled it, that's what's brought us back up to those those top spots. Yeah, well, I think that's amazing. And, you know, it's great to see what you've been able to accomplish there. And, and I'm curious, like, why Why do you think you are a standout with Orange Theory Fitness? Like, why do you think that you have gotten results that are far above the norm um, and you've got retention, you've got member counts that are, like, off the charts? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we our studio is actually number two in the country, one of the studios, and the, the population is, like, 40,000. It's not anything huge. We're, you know, we're half hour outside of Seattle. It's not like Medina, you know, a super fancy area, but it's just great community. Um, I'd say initially we did it. We set a good culture. Um, my parents and I, though, we didn't want to buy a job, you know? And so I think we do a really good job of hiring great people and then getting out of their way. Right? We give a lot of autonomy to our managers. When we show up, 
uh, for our meetings. It's how can we support you? Like what's going on? Tell us what's happening. Okay. What do you need from us versus, okay, I need these 17,000 reports and make sure you're doing that. I trust my managers to use their time wisely because they're the ones who are in the business day to day after day. I'm not in there day after day. They know way more about the, the little intricacies and where they're spending their time. So I think that was kind of set the stage. Uh, also a sales background. And that's what I did for a while during COVID. Um, I just started training other franchisees in sales because that's what I did with Cutco. And, you know, when you work with small businesses, nobody goes to work for a yoga studio or fitness place because they love selling. <laughs> they, <laughs> most of the people working there hate selling, um, but they love yoga or fitness or whatever it is. So um, just being able to frame sales in the right way. So it's like funny because people bring in somebody to like, I'm going to bring in a sales trainer to teach my people how to sell. And they're like, here, I'm the sales trainer to help you. And as soon as you say that, they're already like wall up. I don't want to be a salesperson. So we helped a lot of franchisees and all sorts of different um, uh, industries during that time. But post COVID, the biggest thing that helped us take off was that most studios were down a third of their member count. So when they came back out, they're saying, you know what, I'm going to offer a third or maybe half of my classes. Coaches were paid on a sliding scale. So they were saying, you're going to make half of what you were making because we have less than half of the member count. And we did the opposite. Instead of looking through a financial lens, we said, what is the most important thing? The thing that makes boutique fitness tick is member count, reoccurring members in that community. So I'm like, we want retention. If we want retention, they come for our coaches and our staff. So instead of offering, even though we had 25% of our member count, we came back with a full 80 classes. Wow. Well, today, most studios run 45 to 55 classes. So we ran 80 classes, which makes no financial sense. Um, but that way we were able to give the amount of work to all of our coaches. And even we paid our coaches 75% of what they were making when we had full studio. And then we gave them a, a compensation model where as our member account grew, they would get back to that full compensation. That's smart. And uh, now there's zero chance we would have been able to afford that either. Um, but if it wasn't, I mentioned Eric Van Horn, I got involved in his franchise mastermind. And this is why I love masterminds is because, you know, masterminds, you're like, well, what's the point of the mastermind and the whole focus and what's the structure and all this stuff. But really it just takes one little thing. And my one thing was learning about ERC credits when they came out. So we had them in real time in 2021. We weren't paying somebody 20% of the ERC to go get it for us or whatever. Our payroll took care of it. It was a small fee, like less than hundred. I don't think it was even hundred bucks or whatever it was. And that gave us the money to afford to bring back our full staff. So from March to July, we went from 300 to 700 members in both studios. And then it's just been up from there. Yeah. So if you look at a return on the investment of that, <laughs> I mean, that's like you're talking thousands of percent here because it was, you know, what a, a tuition fee to get into the mastermind. It only yeah. took one concept. And this is what I love about like any type of like mastermind coaching relationship. I think a lot of people look very linearly at it um, and, and don't look at the the bigger picture of it just takes one connection, one person, one mindset shift, one technical, tactical uh, item, one strategy shift. I mean, it just takes one thing, one concept, and, and that can be the game changer that not only covers the mastermind for that year, but for like 10 years. Yeah, very much. And, and the thing is, is a lot of those keep going. Like we have reoccurring, but there's no way we would have been at our member count. We would be at a lower member count because of that. So every single month, I'm still profiting from that one decision because that's what helped us get up there so fast. That's amazing. So yeah, thanks, Eric. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eric's, Eric brings so much value to his community, and I'm glad that he was also one of the early people, you know, in, yeah. in the lifestyle investor. And you know, when I, I think about like the early days of the happy hour with. Brad Johnson and Sean Sparks and you and Hans Box and Dinesh Gauba, uh, Ryan Levesque. I mean, th this was the original crew and we had so much fun. We did so much stuff. And who would have ever thought this thing would blow up and become the juggernaut that it is where, you know, we've got, you know, 135, 140 members and we're offering about 20 times more stuff every single a uh, year, in some instances, every single month, it feels like, than what we ever did in the beginning. 
And I remember thinking, gosh, I need someone to help me run this. And I know the exact someone because I know all of your strengths, Ryan. I know you so well. Uh, we're, we're friends, but beyond being friends, I've seen you in a business setting. I've seen your genius as it unfolds in all the operating companies and all the different businesses that you've been part of. And so I knew we had to get you in a position uh, where you could help us scale properly and you know, really bring some clarity to what we were doing, bring clarity to the message to even communicate effectively like what we have to offer. But it took some arm twisting at first. Yeah, because it was December 2020, you just kicked off the mastermind and I was in and kind of helping in the background. But that's when I, like December 2020 was, was dark. We, we was my last month of like my payout for my previous job. So no future revenue on the timeline, no second round of PPP, Washington's still not open. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do next month when the, the rent checks start coming in. But uh, luckily PPP came in, Washington opened or we got news that we could open, but I didn't wanna take it when I needed it, right? Cause I'm like, I wanna be able to do this on my own. I don't want help with it. Uh, and I wasn't sure what I, my responsibilities would be coming back there as well. So well, and just, I also kind of wanted to help you out. Like part of it yeah. was, I know you don't have the money coming in that you once had. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we create a win-win situation where you can, you know, really help us out here and, and get things set up properly, but then I can pay you. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to, I, I, I got this. <laughs> I got, I had to prove that I can do it. And that's why I did the sales training is like, I, I like helping people, but it was more about something that if I needed to scale, I could, because I wasn't going to go get a job and say, hey, I need a job for like five months. And once my orange theories are back, I'm piecing out. Right. So um, I did. I, I, I remember telling you, no, I'm like, no, I'll, I'll help. But I don't want I don't want the full responsibility. Like, so uh, it took it took a little bit more nudging. <laughs> well, I'm glad that it all worked out. And, you know, I think we had um, an experience where we were kind of figuring out, do do we want to bring someone else in? Um, is that the best move? And then it's fun because I knew you always wanted to do it. There's probably a little concern of, you know, do I want to entangle friendship and business? Do I want to, like, am I going to do as well as I think I can do? Yeah. And, and, you know, for me, I'm, I'm pretty hands off. I mean, for anyone that's ever worked with me or anyone that knows me, I'm, uh, probably the biggest macro manager. And for someone like you, I think you're going to thrive in that because there's no management. I mean, we're teammates and we do, you know, we plan everything together and it, it just makes it a lot more fun. And I'm just so glad you're on the team because our business, this, this incredible brand, the brand was great, uh, from, from day one, because we had the right people, but when we started scaling and having so many people applying, I mean, we couldn't keep up with the demand on the application side. And early on, I was doing all the interviews, right? I was, I was screening everyone. I was saying no a ton. Unfor like if I felt you bad. You don't do a good job at saying no either. You, I'm you, not, you I am enough. not. You did for, for the, the mastermind, which I know is, is not something you enjoy saying no. That's right. And so, uh, but I, I had to protect the integrity of the community. Yeah. It's, I wanted to be very careful because there are a lot of communities out there where, um, they accept everyone. And so when you come in to find like value alignment, it you got to weed through a lot of people that may not be aligned or may not be um, at the level or scale that you are hoping for that you're trying to get to, to find maybe like one or two, um, you know, like people that, that really can help you elevate. I wanted to have the opposite. I wanted to have every single person can help anyone else elevate because they're all playing the life, uh, you know, life and business and, and wealth building at an incredibly high level, but they're also humble and, yeah. and they're not flaunting their success, but they're also curious and hungry and want to grow. Like they haven't arrived, you know, so that's important. And I, and to me, having that infrastructure was key and, and being able to plug you into the role of kind of running the day to day was everything because um, we have streamlined so much. We've, we've created systems that we didn't have. I mean, I do feel like in the beginning, we were just, uh, you know, kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Whereas today, I mean, we've got a well-refined machine um, that's operating. Thanks to you. Wow. Well, I mean, you do such a great job at getting value. It's hard to keep up with you. You know, I remember at one point you're saying, I don't know if we're going to be able to maintain getting enough guests and like our wait list for people to present to the mastermind goes out months 
um, to like, it, it's tough to decide, you know, we don't want to do 10 calls a month to overwhelm our people. So it's, it's the opposite problem that just goes to show, you know, for you connecting and, and how much you just really uh, are always about giving. And that's, that's why I joined. It's like when, you know, I don't know if we want to get into the, the story that made me finally nudge, but it was had some consultants in and they're like, well, this is the way we should do it. And it's like, okay, I wasn't quite sure. And I saw the first couple of weeks and I'm like, you know what? We really need somebody who's in the mastermind, who understands it and really cares for it, who's going to be kind of making those decisions. And that was kind of the final straw where I'm like, all right, I, I had cared too much about how the, the group was run, like just because it'd been so impactful for me. The, you know, the only complaint about the group, and I echo that, is that it didn't start earlier because it would have saved me a lot of money on some other investments I got into if I had better deal flow at the time, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's interesting because you did have uh, an experience that maybe wasn't as positive when it comes to, you know, learning how to invest. And I don't know if you want to get into that story, but I think it would be pretty relevant to a lot of our listeners, to those watching us here too, just, um, you know, if, if you're not careful with who you're trusting with investment um, education, you might end up in a very highly speculative arena that just doesn't have the returns and yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of promotion and, and a lot of fluff that ends up not being reality. Yeah. And I'll mention it quickly, but primarily because of the lessons that came out of it and how it's helped us shape our mastermind. But, you know, I got involved in an angel group and it's, it's a su successful angel group. It's just, it's an angel group. So you have to be in hundreds of investments to really have, you know, the return. And I didn't have enough capital to invest, you know, hundreds of investments as a single investor right there. So now you get into a few things and it was all about learning, but it was angel. So they did what most of the angel investments did. And like, I still have a couple in play and most of them have, you know, fizzled out within, you know, four years. And so knowing, you know, with your book and I should have just been talking with you more, but, um, you know, uh, knowing those, I would have done things totally differently as far as the amount of capital I was allocating for that. And I love how we, when we do invest in something angel or venture, the way we're able to, um, diversify and, and de-risk with some of the funds that we work with is incredible. But, the what it what it got me thinking about is that group even though it was in person i wasn't really connected to anybody i still have a couple people i talked to but i was one of the younger people in the group and there just wasn't that same connection where you know that curiosity you met everybody kind of knew stuff and there was kind of the clicks the roi <laughs> definitely wasn't there uh lost money on those ones and then impact and the impact was good I learned from my mistakes, you know, but <laughs> the, the impact came from making mistakes in the group, not from the lessons of the group. And I, I did learn some good stuff on evaluating and things, but um, it, it really just shows you with, with our group, we've really taken those things of you did such a good job from day one, the right people, the right community. You would never guess our members are worth what some of them are worth when you were just talking on the phone. No, there's no dumb questions. Being able to, you know, ask questions and help other people and give so giving some of them are more than giving with their time. They probably should protect even more. Um, and then ROI, right? You, you you've done a great job with that. And I think that was one of the pivots when I came in. Is so many people had come in in the group, but then when we really looked at it, you and I were saying, hey, after we're hearing all these stories where people were really making all the biggest ROI were the connections from the group. I mean, we had so many people exit. Uh, company was the last year and it was 23 people 23 exit. yeah and for them to be able to network and how it's structured and here's how the PE company is going to come in at the 11th hour and do all those stuff and to be ready for that i mean some of those people were saving seven figures just from being able to network with some of those other people we've had people that have acquired businesses we've had people that have started businesses together people that have started businesses with some of our strategic partners that you know will pay off yeah, uh, you know, in ten multiples of of what the the frame or the uh, the mastermind fee was, right? Yeah, um, hundred percent. And then what the the other ROI we've got into is the tax strategy one. That's right. And by the way, one of the things I think would be really fun to do, um, we've talked about this a lot, which is what is the criteria that you want for a mastermind? Like, there there's certain criteria that is important when considering what mastermind to join. And by the way, I'm a believer that everyone should find a mastermind to get involved in. 
Um, there are different levels, there are different tiers, there are different niches, but I think everyone should have a peer group and a community that is playing the game of life at the level or above the level of where they want to be, and then have the opportunity for you as you grow and get better to be able to mentor those that are coming in that are newer. And so um, I just, you know, when I think about masterminds in general, and this isn't for the lifestyle investor mastermind, I'm, I'm thinking the criteria that I want to see, because for me, I've joined, I mean, I'm part of, you know, eight different communities, uh, mastermind communities or, or, or groups. Um, and, and I love each of them for, you know, the, the things that I think that they're great at. But one of the things that I realized is it's hard to find everything I'm looking for in one group. And so I wanted to get clarity on, on what that looks like and try and find that group. And I could never find it. And so yeah. part of the impetus in starting the Lifestyle Investor was that these criteria were so important to me um, that it, since it's not out there, I'll just create it and, and we'll see if it attracts the people that I think it could attract, right? So if we're talking, so why don't we get into some of the criteria that we've, we've discussed as being like the three key criteria? Well, I think too many people look at just the topic, right? Well, this is, I, I want help with my business. Where's the business mastermind? So that's the one I'm going to get into. And what you've mentioned are the difference. What, the, what really makes a mastermind are the people. So that's, that's challenging to find out on just an interview. So knowing somebody who's in, getting recommenda recommended by somebody else, um, uh, getting to talk to members before you can get in, those are all great ones. But the people in the community are generally where the value comes. Um, it makes me think of, you know, when we hit 50 members and we said, should we go to 100? And we said, yeah, let's do it. And when we went to 100, it was infinitely better because there was more smart, amazing people and there's more people engaging because the mastermind was never just about you. You are a great job, do a great job facilitating and bringing in guests and introducing people, but it's not just the Justin show. There's so many amazing, smart people, um, but you did a great job curating right from the beginning. And because you did that at the beginning, now it's kind of self-perpetuating. It keeps attracting the right type people. Well, the collective so, genius of the group uh, is far smarter than any single person, way smarter yeah. than me. I mean, yeah, it, it's funny. Sometimes people join thinking they want to learn from me and realize really fast that this group, uh, that they want to learn from everyone in their area of expertise because everyone has been very successful at a high level in some industry space or niche yeah that's fun fun highlighting all the different members and, and sitting down and having that conversation and there's some genius that you don't know immediately and when you sit down and talk with them you're like oh my gosh this person's brilliant I've, I've been able to sit down first time you get to explore some of those conversations that's right so the right people the right community is is kind of like that first criteria uh, what about the second criteria? Uh, I, I would say, you know, clear path to ROI. That, and that's when you a, say ROI, just a return on investment. Yeah, you know, we want to see how your money's coming back. Now, that can be different. You know, we're both in front row dads. I love that. That's not a monetary ROI, although we've partnered with a lot of different people because it's nice doing business with people who have those same values. That's and right. that's what I knew. And we had that conversation of like, okay, I will come on, but only because I'm working during these hours as those were all the kids at school. I knew that's something you'd appreciate because you're in front row dads yep. and, and have that. But, um, you know, most people invest in a mastermind because they want to better themselves and there there should have some type of return. I want to get my business here. I want to get my finances there. I want to get whatever it might be. Um, so I think a clear path and understanding uh, where it's laid out before. Right. You, you know, there's multiple ways. OK, here's how it's going to happen. Yep. hundred percent. That makes it easy because it's an investment, you yeah. know? And, and, and some of that return on investment is growing yourself to the capacity that you can make these moves, right? So it's investing in yourself, investing in the education, in the relationships, uh, in, in taking the time to learn what everyone does and, and maybe how their superpowers can combine with yours. So it's, so yeah, there is a monetary ROI that I think is important to focus on. I also think that there's a business ROI uh, that that we can group in there and say, hey, that's important to focus on. But I think that the the ROI on like uh, on your uh, on the return on you, your education, um, your level of understanding uh, complex topics, I think that's huge. Yeah, I think you could almost make that the third one is the just the impact, like the non monetary impact 
of, you know, in our group specifically, I think of buying time back seems to become a theme. We have hiring W-2s. We have business owners that are in the business that want to get outside of the business. We have people that have exited businesses. Um, but the common theme is kind of buying that time back. And now what they're able to do with that time, um, we have people that are RVing across the, the country and people have left their W-2 and um, people that have sold the business are, are now working a fraction of the hours that they were working before. Yeah, I mean, they're truly lifestyle investors. They have bought their time back and, and it is so cool to see. I mean, I, I do think that impact piece is really important. So, you know, from, from that criteria, obviously people and community uh, that stands on its own, uh, having a return on investment. And by the way, sometimes that return on investment could be one year that is, you know, worth 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, we got one of our members that said, oh yeah, this is worth uh, like a lifetime uh, membership because of what I got on this one nugget, right? So it, it doesn't have to be um, as linear where it's like, well, I put in X dollars and now I've made, you know, X dollars plus whatever else. It was um, like we, I did a few interviews for, you know, I still do one here and there, but we'd have people that are like, well, if, if I got to make that back on the return of my first year and I'm like, you know, this is not, it's probably not the right fit, you know? Yep. You're not going to make one investment and cash flow, the first, first of all, the investment is longer than one year, but it's it's having that longer term thinking, bigger impact, or the people that we're, we're interested in in the group. That's right. And for me, you know, I had financial freedom once, and that was one of the most rewarding feelings that I ever had. But you, but it only happens once. Like you achieve it. I mean, I guess in theory, you could lose it and do it all over <laughs> again. I hope that never happens, but I know I have the skill set to do it. But, um, you know, when I think about it, it's like, that I celebrated that that was really a special time, but it wasn't long until I was ready for what was next. And what I love on the impact piece is watching people regularly have and find and create financial freedom in their lives. And then you get to see the impact because you know their families, you know their spouse because their spouse is involved, you know their kids. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of people that have brought their kids to several of our events, which is really cool. So yeah, it, it's, it's super rewarding. And I do think that that impact piece is important. And I also think that, you know, it's, it's for most people, it's really easy to make money, right? The, I, the different amount may vary, but you can find a job, you can make money. Um, I think from there, um, most people are not very good at managing money, right? you are a great saver. That's like, you know, foundational number one, you know, level, like you got to be good at saving money. Um, but most people are not good at saving. They're not good at investing. Right. And then you have a very small percentage of people that are good at multiplying money. And I think that's where people, once they get that foundational skill of, of, um, you know, managing money, saving money, allocating towards different things, the multiplying, that's where you get around people that are really good at it and, and play it at a higher level. And then, you know, that, that next level is making money count. So there's a certain point where we don't need more consumerism. We need to, um, help the groups, the organizations, the less privileged, um, you know, those that are, are fighting for freedoms that not everyone out that, you know, that they should have that they don't have. Right. And so all those to me kind of roll under that impact and, and yeah. finding the right program for you, I think really matters. You know, what, what group, what community has the criteria and the value set that is the most important to you that's going to resonate at a high level. Right. Well, you mentioned those those skill sets of investing and, and you know, but it, it's more than the skill set. I think it's it's the wiring that is the harder thing to change, to go from a saver to an investor, to go from somebody who is constantly chasing that next thing to like, hey, I don't need the next thing. I'm, my life is great. That's not going to impact my life getting more money, but there's another way I can impact. And I feel like you have to be around the right people to change the wiring. You know, just learning this, you can't just go learn investing. Right? right. And then all of a sudden now you're a good investor. It, there is some mental shifts about learning, investing in that wiring. And it, it's much easier to do when you're around people that think that different way that you want to be thinking. Yeah. Well, you've done a good job of bringing clarity to, um, you know, kind of the, the value prop of the Lifestyle Investor Mastermind. And I'd love to hear even some of the big changes that have happened from 
last year to this year because it looks completely different in a very positive way because of all the things that have been added um, to the community for features and for benefits and perks and whatnot. So I, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about what's changed, what, you know, what has been upgraded. Okay, so when we, we going back to the happy hour, the mastermind started by doing deal review, right? So we would look at deals and eventually we had the deal sponsors on. So a lot of the first mastermind members were there because of deals was the, the main driver. And then I, we've had very few people not renew, especially in the first couple of years there. And so I, I talked to a few of those people and what happened is they were just there for the deals when they allocated their money, then they stopped paying attention. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much other stuff going on. And so I wanted to make sure people are really aware because the people that, like we mentioned earlier, having the impacts were in different areas besides the deal. Now we had people that were growing their passive income through the deals, which was great. It's still a part of the ROI, but we mentioned the connections is the first one. Um, the education alone, how many people I've talked to have read your book and say, oh, I think about things differently now when I look about investing. But when they're engaged into the mastermind for a year, it will change the way they make every financial decision for the rest of their life. So you think of what, what's the compounding effect if you were one, if you, every financial decision you made for the rest of your life was just 1% better, what would the return be on that? Uh, whether it's saving money, making money, investing money, it's a financial decision, they're learning that. The tax one was big. You, you've done a great job of surrounding us with some, some great experts, many of you have been on the podcast, but when you're a member coming in, there's just tax strategy here, here, here. So we made this tax strategy tracker. You know, now it's up to 50 strategies. And I, it was great because we, the first time we had it, we had Jess Sohan and I, I said, hey, here's the new deal. I know you've been on before, but here's our list. You need to cover something that's not on the list yet. And he sent back, he's like, you guys have everything. Like, how am I supposed to do this? But we made him work and we had like another 10 strategies on there. Um, and so now when a new member comes in, we're like, okay, here's how, you know, we get their goals. We, the other thing, talking about goals, investment criteria and asset allocation. Yes. Uh, we had so many members that come in and they're, they're so excited about the deals. They're like, I haven't seen this and that before. And we're like, whoa, 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 slow your roll. What's your goal? First of all, let's get that investment criteria up. So you're not making emotional decisions. And then really looking at what's your allocation now how do you really think about the world over the next five, 10 years? And you bring in a lot of great assets and, and a good economist and state of the market speakers to say, where do I want my asset allocation to be? Now, all of a sudden that cuts through all the noise and it makes it a lot easier to make those decisions, but it's great to bounce those off with other people. And then finally, I guess the fourth uh, ROI is the deal flow. So connections, education, which is a long-term tax strategy, which is nice because it hits that dopamine. You can get it within 12, 12 months there, and then the deal flow. So those are the ROIs that we really focus on with our with our new members there. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's important. Um, most people don't have an investment criteria, so they don't have a list of why they should or shouldn't invest in things. Um, and they make emotional decisions, as you mentioned. I think most people haven't even figured out what their goals are. They're just maybe doing what other people are doing or copying other people. And I think it's important to get clarity on what's important to you. What are What would be an epic life for you? And uh, what does that look like? What does that include? And how does that break down on a monthly basis? And how do we figure out how to get to financial freedom based on your your monthly costs to live the lifestyle you have today and the lifestyle that you want to live, right? And and from the standpoint of asset allocation, it's so funny. People come in and they join and they have no clue what their asset allocation is. And, and so it's funny when we're like, well, what do you want it to be? Uh, and they're like, well, I don't know, because I don't even know what it is. So we've got to help them figure out what it looks like. Most people are so lopsided. They're so heavy in one area and it's not well balanced. But I, I think if you look at you know the wealthiest people in the world, and, and I look at data all the time from the wealthiest families, the family offices that run um, you know, all the financial aspects, wealth creation for billionaires and, and centimillionaires, all the, the wealthiest people. And it shows clear as day that they are well diversified a bunch across a bunch of different asset classes. So most people think that the majority of wealth is created in the stock market. It's actually not. And most wealthy people really only have between 15 and 25% of their net worth in public equities and another, you know, 25% in real estate and 25% in private equity and 25% in everything else. And, and, and how that breaks down between, you know, cash and, 
um, uh, you know, I guess cash and cash equivalents and fixed income and, you know, private credit and all the different things. But I think it's important to address and assess those things. And most people don't even take the time to do it. So that's like, you know, move one. <laughs> Foundationally, we've got to figure out where we are and where we want to go. So I, I love that. Yeah. And it, it's different than just looking at a report because anybody can either pull up a report or pay for some of those reports you share. But a retail investor is not a Harvard endowment fund, right? So it's yep. not just looking about where things are allocated, but why and the thought process and then how does it apply to you? Because you're going to be a little different. Like, like your personal asset allocation, I know what it is. It doesn't match those, but it matches your skill set and it matches the whys of all of those other uh, big institutions, right? That's right. That's right. And um, what else? Are there other... Uh things, differences, perks uh, in yeah, I, the newest year of well, I mean, the mastermind? We started in 2020. So everybody was sitting home on a laptop and, you know, we, we did an event kind of by accident in 2022 and everybody loved it. Uh, just a one day, we have our annual retreat, which is epic. And that's coming up in December. I, you know, uh, I missed the first one because we had birth of our third child uh, just a few weeks earlier. So last year was one of the first times I'd met a lot of the members in person. So it was so much fun and everybody's there. Um, but we were like, we need to do this more often. So we're like, we'll, we'll do quarterly meetups. And, you know, we're talking now in October. I think we've had nine of them. So That's right. uh, with two more days scheduled this month, so we'll probably hit well over a dozen. And, and that doesn't count the informal ones where, you know, anytime somebody flies into Austin, they're like, hey, I'll be in Austin for this weekend. All of a sudden there's 12 people at a dinner because we have so many people there in that Texas triangle. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and some people will come in and they'll do a self-study, whereas other people kind of want to get involved in, in, you know, all the uh, live events, all the live things that we do. But uh, it's fun because we now have over 500 hours of content in our, um, you know, learning library, uh, which is fun. And people can kind of research the topics that they want to learn and, and get great at that. And I love forming partnerships with other groups, too. We've got a bunch of big names that we've done some cool partnerships with, some on the health side. Yeah. Um, doing yeah, discounts. Yeah, blood work this, this yeah. year. Some right. of the longevity clinics that we have. Um, really excited about the software, the financial software that um, is not going to be cheap, but um, because we're early, we've been able to negotiate it free for all of our members, which is very exciting. Um, the free trust analysis with some of our advisors there. We just have a lot of, it's people love the group, so they're willing to give a lot for the group, which is nice. Um, we have some great connections now. Um, some of the other things we we've, we've added there, we just filmed our tax course, which I'm really excited because, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast and I, I'm excited about future member podcasts because not everybody's going to be in the mastermind. It's just, it's just not, it's not going to happen that way. We're capping it anyways, but, um, there's so much value that happens in there that we want to be able to share more. So I'm excited for your member podcast that will come up. I think of Ryan Williamson, the testimony he just wrote, it'd be great to get him on there. Um, but some of the courses we're doing where almost anybody can do it. So you want that piece of lifestyle investor tax strategy that's coming out soon, uh, whether or not you're in the mastermind, you'll be able to get that uh, more live events. Um, we're working on some Justin AI, so you can talk with Justin and um, we can feed all the sources from all the wisdom, both an internal one for the mastermind and a public facing one. So we have a lot of cool things in the works. Yeah, I love just the idea of um grabbing hold of AI and, and using that to fine tune and, and strengthen what is already a really fun and cool experience and program here uh, yeah. within our community. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, obviously doing more of the trips, more of the assessments that we've built. Oh, um, quiz, quiz is coming out. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. Minute. That's but, going to be awesome. Oh, uh, well, it's a, it, it's an investor blind spot quiz, but basically just the quiz itself is very educational. What will happen when you you look at kind of the multiple choice, we get into tax strategy, we get to asset allocation, deal flow. Uh, a lot of the first two or three answers, you, you're probably where you're going to say, yeah, I'm one of these three things. And you'll see, then there'll be another option. And a lot of people say, I didn't even know that is a thing, right? I didn't know that that's what that was option for tax strategy or whatever it is. And so just actually going through the quiz is very educational. And then it kind of pinpoints, hey, here, here's where, and then we have free resources that get sent out. So I, that's all free. Uh, the quiz funnel will be coming out. That's fun. Yeah, we've got a bunch of free events, uh, free content. In fact, 
One of the cool things that we just did recently, we, for the first time ever, ran a non-member Lifestyle Investor Live event. That was really cool. Um, we brought in Garrett Gunderson and Cody Sanchez and a handful of other people, but uh, just friends of the community, people that, that speak often uh, to our community about buying businesses or about um, growing wealth or about uh, utilizing life insurance in, in unique ways. And so I loved how that event went. And I think because of the success of the event and, and really the feedback that we got from those that joined, uh, that we're going to be doing another one of those. And maybe we end up doing that once a year. Yeah. Well, well, we have to plan it, you and me here. So <laughs> we'll <be out laughs> of them. But the, there was so much positive feedback. We'll have to do another, at least one next year for sure. Yeah. Uh, it was nice keeping it small though. We didn't have, it wasn't like a thousand people at a con. It was, we had like 35, 40 people, like perfect size group. So I think we'll do something maybe a little bit bigger, but I, I don't want to have it hundreds and hundreds of people. I agree. Yeah. I, I like capping everything we do. Uh, I think that that's powerful, you know, for the community, uh, you know, have events that everyone can attend, have some events that are smaller. So that way um, people get to know each other. It doesn't feel so big for some of the one day experiences and uh, some of the overnight stuff. And then um, I, I'm also excited just to, to keep a group small enough that everyone, even non-members, if we do another one of these events, that, that they get to know each other well yeah. by the end of it. That's awesome. Well, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, any last thoughts that you have uh, that you want to share? Uh, final thoughts. Uh, you know, if, if you're a podcast listener, I would, I would definitely take advantage of the free strategy session one because it's free. Uh, but you'll just hear about everything that we have because we have free options. We have free content for doing those. Then there's some courses. Um, and then there's also, you know, a lot of people know the Lifestyle Investor Mastermind. There's another mastermind that's a different tier uh, price level. Uh, that Justin twisted my other arm, and now I'm, I'm jumping in and uh, and helping out with that one. But it's a little bit lower priced here. That uh, a lot of exciting things are going to be happening in that mastermind as well. Yeah, tribe of investors. We had so many applicants that um, weren't just they're great people. They just weren't the right fit for lifestyle investor yet. Uh, in time, they likely yeah. can be, and and we hope that they graduate uh, to it. But. Uh, we saw the demand was there and thought it'd be really cool to kind of roll a new one out. And this one has taken off as well. So uh, really, really fun. Uh, where can people go for a free strategy session? Uh, uh, lifestyle Investor uh, forward slash uh, consultation. Wonderful. Well, I hope that you've had some fun uh, tuning in with Ryan and I today. Ryan, it's always a pleasure to hang. It's always so much fun, so much fun um, connecting and you know, talking about life, talking about business, talking about, you know, uh, just the journey that we've had together. And um, I love working with you. Uh, we just, you know, it, it's, it's so effortless. So I just want to thank you for all that you're doing publicly. Um, we would not be where we are without you and uh, without your, your creative ideas, your innovative ideas. And I'm excited for the future because we've got a lot in store. I mean, a ton of stuff we did not share. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I'm really looking forward uh, to those that, uh, you know, are the right fit and, and, and find this to be a community that is right for them. So for everyone tuning in, I love wrapping up every week the same uh, way that I do. I've got a question. This question to me is, is important because uh, as the Japanese um, uh, Kaizen uh, mantra or saying goes, it's, it's you know, this idea of taking, uh, you know, one step forward or getting one degree better or just finding a way to, to have any sort of improvement from one day to the next. And so I love closing out every podcast uh, episode that we do asking one simple question of you. What is one step that you can take today to move towards financial freedom and living the life that you truly desire on your terms? So not by default, but rather by design. Thanks, and we'll catch you next week.